Marina is not allowed to gamble anymore. Previously, on Highway Blossoms. My boobs are not that big. <laughs> Turns out I was wrong. Two hours of agony. I wander from store to store, stepping in without actually caring what's for sale. The first is a vegan restaurant. I don't try any samples. Just next door is some fetish shop, with its windows covered. All the lights inside are colored, mostly red or sometimes violet. The girl behind the counter, pale skin and with artificially black hair, gives me a smile that I return. But I don't stick around. I don't even know what I'm doing. Going through the motions of being a tourist, I guess? Technically, I am exploring Las Vegas. Tomorrow, I'm sure I won't be able to remember a single detail of these shops. Up ahead is yet another street vendor. His setup is nearly twice as long as most of the others. It includes large glass display cases. Looks like it must be a pain to transport. I wander over, pretending to be interested. The clerk, a Hispanic man with a short goatee, watches me but doesn't say anything. Not even a greeting. It's all cell phones and phone accessories. Chargers, cases, cords, and the like. Nothing relevant to me. There's a special discount on prepaid phones and time cards right now, it seems. A half dozen identical posters plaster the wall of the longest case. I stare at one of the flyers, though I'm not actually reading it. Just imagining if Maria and I had cell phones. It might help at times like this. Times when I'm being ridiculous and clingy and an idiot. Being able to reach her anytime would be nice, but would they get much use? That's when I realize something, and I'm dumbfounded by this simple fact. What it is that's been bothering me since we split up. This is the first time since me and Marina that I've been on my own. That she isn't just a room away or within shouting distance. Even though it's only been a couple hours, I suddenly feel profoundly alone. It's pathetic, I know. I'll see her again in less than an hour now. But the anxiety of separation gets the better of me. It makes me sick as all the horrible scenarios rush into my head again. The ones where something bad is happening to her, and she's not able to call for help. I look at the phones in the case. I've never had one, so I'm not very knowledgeable, but they look cheap and flimsy. I try to find a brand name, but it wouldn't mean much to me even if I could. The only names I'd be familiar with are those massive companies who make everything, not just phones. The ones whose merchandise costs hundreds if not thousands of dollars. I think Marina had a Heisei? Heard they're pretty good. Then again, I've also heard about shady stuff with them suddenly replacing all their production workers with robots. Gramps said this sort of thing would be a part of the New, or new World Order. Doesn't matter, though. It's tempting, but there isn't much point. In just a week, less now even, your cello will be over. And after that? Well, a phone gives us a way to stay in touch. Once she's... Once we've... I spin around and walk away in a hurry, feeling suddenly sick again. I must have looked like a lunatic, coming up, standing still, then freaking out and leaving. Maybe that's why the guy didn't say anything. I just looked like another insane junkie. I picture some tweaker stepping on Ellie towards Marina, who of course wouldn't even notice, and... I shed those thoughts out of my head. One hour. Just one more hour. Chill, I tell myself for the thousandth time. Across the street from my phone cards is a bright green sign for a candy store. One of those places that's Florida ceiling bins of gummies and that sell by the pound. I half expect to see Marina in there herself. Getting her surprise bag of sugar might be a good way to try to make it for being weird. Until the next time I act weird, that is. I cross the street as soon as there's a gap in traffic, not bothering to go to a crosswalk. The doors have an outline and handle that are the same lime green as the sign. When I step inside, I see that the walls are too. I'm reminded of the slime from those old shows I used to watch on TV that would be sprayed onto the audience or cast Slime Time Live? Is she thinking about that? Not the most appetizing impression. The selection is good though. Like I expected, there are more varieties in candy than I've ever seen in a single place. Only pictures. There's several different types of plastic bag that can fill, ranging from I'm on a diet to garbage bag sizes. I grab a medium sized one. Then I realize I don't know what to get for Marina. Definitely chocolates, but with or without nuts. I can't remember if I've ever had an opinion. I try to recall what she's gotten at gas stations along a trip, but I never paid that much attention. Maybe I should go for a mixture of both. But then what if she's allergic to something? It probably wouldn't even have even come up, since we always eat out in order for ourselves. I don't want to give her a three pound sack of anaphylactic shock. 
Gummies then. This might be safer. Gummies will make you shit. There are more types of gummy candies than I ever thought existed. Different flavored rings, candies shaped like the fruits they taste like, and other things like chewy soda bottles. Just give her suckers. Everyone loves a sucker. <laughs> For just a moment, I wonder about which ones I should pick. I think I remember her saying she loves raspberry. Or was it strawberry? I think she's gotten strawberry soda before. Not that that means anything. This is a gift, so I want it to be perfect, and a bag full of things she dislikes. Then I remember. Marina likes pretty much everything. The layer of the simplicity, I dump a small scoop of just about every sort of gummy that they sell. For good measure, I get a second, smaller bag and fill it with some wilted chocolate balls, caramel clusters, and plain old chocolate chunks. Safe options. I haul the two bags over to the counter. There's just one attendant, and she's currently ringing up a mom with her two sons. The kids start around their mom's legs, rattling displays and knocking items off the shelf. Anyone makes them stop or fix their mess. One of the kids stares up at me and I frown at him, deeply. He stops running and hides behind his mom's legs. Good. When they leave, the kid is still clinging to her like a bear cub. I set my bags up on the counter and kneel down to replace some of the spilled items. As I do that, the shopkeeper comes around front, nearly dump bumping into me. Oh, you don't have to do that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I look up, directly into her knees. I straighten up and we're suddenly way too close. Stumbling backwards, I grab the counter to support myself. She laughs, eyes crinkling. She's cute. Her tan skin is complemented by the bright red uniform she wears. A little name tag on the counter says her name is Cassie. You know, there's a special going on right now. Oh yeah? A stack of postcards sits by the credit card machine. She hands me one. If you buy 10 more bags, you get one for free. Do they have to be specific sizes? I try to imagine how much candy that would be. You need a wheelbarrow to haul it out. Cassie laughs, probably my expression. Yeah, we haven't had many people spring for that one. The person I'm buying this stuff for probably would, if she was here. This'll probably be gone by tonight. I just read the bags, still sitting on the scale. Oh, shopping for your sister, or...? Nah, my girlfriend. I try out the words, seeing how it sounds in relation to Marina. As expected, it makes my heart skip a beat. During the beat, I feel like I see the shopkeeper's face fall, just for a second. Yeah, lucky girl. Thanks. I don't know if she means because of the candy or because of me. After ringing up my bag, she dumps them into an even larger bag. This seems unnecessary, but I guess it makes them easier to carry. She passes me the candy as well as a receipt. Have a good day! Try the peach rings. They're my favorite. I will. Have a nice day, too. The girl waves as I leave the store. Outside, I check the receipt since I really wasn't listening to the total. Wow, this, that's like me. Like, I don't pay attention to what the total of items are. I just, I just want stuff. So I get it. <laughs> Looks like she didn't charge me for the smaller bag. I glance back inside, but she's disappeared into the back room. I guess that answers my earlier question. Flattered, I head back to the Rio where we're parked. It's not long until I'm supposed to meet Marina, and if I spend too long outside, her present will melt. Walking back to the casino where we parked is way faster than leaving it was. That's probably because I'm still missing the human pinball, so I'm not held up every time we pass a shop. I say that, but of course I'm eager to see her again. In some parallel universe, where I hadn't met Marina, I might have stuck around the candy shop store to chat for a longer time. But unfortunately for Cassie, I already had someone. The parking lot at the Rio has filled up even more. Getting out of here is going to be a pain, since there wasn't a whole lot of room to begin with. I make my way to the RV and let myself in. It feels like an oven, and the first thing I do is turn on the AC. I set the bags of candy down on my bed to inspect them. As I'd feared, the chocolate slowly melted, streaking brown against the clear path plastic. It's not too bad, though, and a couple hours in the fridge should have been good as new. I'll leave the gummies on the counter since they didn't suffer as much on the walk back. Rain and I are supposed to meet up here in about half an hour. Since it's so soon, I may as well just wait in here while it's more comfortable. I'll lay down on my bed and try to read that book marina has been sucked into for a few days. I can't stay focused on the words long enough to process them. 
It doesn't take long before I give up and set it aside. Now I just stare up at the ceiling. I used to do this most nights when I couldn't sleep. After Grant's passed, but before I met Marina. It wasn't that it comforted me or anything, but the amount of effort it took not to think of anything usually led to me falling asleep without realizing it. Instead, this time it lets my thought I let my thoughts wander. Sleeping has been easier lately. Actually doing something during the day and getting exercise helps a lot. Also, my thoughts have been less cloudy, less muddled. Sure, there are still moments where I think of Grams, and the pain hits me again. Having Marina around makes those rare. Someday I might be able to think of him without her hurting. I don't know if I want that, though. Isn't that just like forgetting? People say you move on and get over deaths. What does that mean for the person you get lost? I roll onto my side and stare at the picture of me and Gramps hanging on the wall. I can't take it and roll onto my other side. Uh... Well. Groaning into my pillow is cathartic. Without Marina here, I can be as loud as I want. To my surprise, no tears come. Anyone walking by outside would probably think I'm dying or in pain, but I don't care. Alone time has its upsides after all. Grieving is complicated and exhausting. Sometimes I wonder if I'm even doing it right. There must be something wrong with me if I don't even want to get over Gramps. I sit up, still hugging the pillow to my chest. Marina will be back soon, but you can talk about this with her. As I think that, I feel a stab of guilt. It's not her problem. It's something I have to deal with myself. I force myself up and over to the driver's seat. I'm not going anywhere, but I can listen to music and watch Marina's return. I stick in a tape and kick back. She's not kicked back! She's slouched over. A few songs pass by. It's been 20 minutes or so. I start to scan the parking lot, looking for her familiar red hair. The tape ends. That's okay. It was a short one. I replace it with another one, chosen at random. Still no sign of Marina. I get up and check the clock. She's about 10 minutes late now. Maybe the clock is off somehow? I hop out of the RV and ask for someone for the time, and I just up exactly what that clock said. Where begins to tighten my stomach, but I force myself to calm down. It's Marina, and it's only been 10... no, 15 minutes. Looks like she got distracted and is on her way right now. Five more minutes pass. I begin to pace back and forth. Didn't she say that she was trying for a decent time when she said three hours? I mean, things take time. We all know what she's doing. I mean, sure, things could have happened to her, but still. Should I go look for her? I have no idea where to start, though. If she got to the RV and I wasn't there, then she might go looking for man's dead. No, I have to stay and wait. Another 10 minutes. She's half an hour late now. I'm so buying us cell phones. As soon as she's back here, we're going to that guy on the street and we're getting prepaid phones. From a few streets away, I can hear the sound of a siren, a fire truck, or ambulance or something. The knot in my throat feels larger. I cough, just to relieve some of the tension. I have to go look. I can't take just sitting here. I switch off the engine, throw my shoes on, and climb out. And then I see her. Head down, walking slow, but coming towards me. The relief in my voice probably conveys the panic that just drained out of me. She looks up at the sound of her name, that's what when I see when that's when I see that she's crying. What's wrong? I rush over. What's wrong? Alarm poisons my voice. Did something happen to her after all? Put my hands on her shoulders and shake her gently. Marina, talk to me. What happened? Are you okay? They cut my hair off too short. <laughs> She still can't talk, but she nods. Thank God. There are no sobs, but her eyes are pouring tears. Every so often she hiccups, like she's barely restraining herself from fully bawling. Come on! I take her hand and lead her back to the RV. No one gives us a second glance. This is probably a common occurrence here. Marina suddenly follows me into the RV. I lead her to my bed and have her sit down. I sit beside her. Alternating between rubbing her back and her shoulders, I try to get her to calm down. Slowly, her breathing slows to normal. When I offer her tissue, she blows her nose, loudly. Then she takes a few more to wipe her eyes. Rather than prod her more, I wait, even though it takes all my self-control. After I shut her away, she looks at me, eyes still watering. I messed up, Amber! Bad! 
How? Her breath catches again and she sobs. Oh. Did she go to a casino and try to give us a bunch of money? Did she take the nuggets? Did she lose all of our fortune? Girl. I will kick you out of this RV. <laughs> and then there's a knock at the RV door. What the hell? I stand up. I can't see who it is from here. I'll be right back. I unlock the front door and open it to an all too familiar face. It's time to pay up! What? I shut the door. Or it's even fully latched. Marina. Mariah starts to pound on the door. I lock it and head back to Marina. Let them in. Really? Huh? Go let them in. It's Mariah, right? Yeah, but how did you... Wait, does this have something to do with... She placed a bet and we lost? With a bad feeling about it all, I go back to the door, which is still suffering Mariah's assault. I open and step back so they can enter. Mariah storms in with a huff, acting like she always is if she owns the place. Oh, look! She changed her jacket! Actually, it looks better. Joseph and Tess fall in after her. Joseph gives me a small smile and shake of his head. Sorry. He says it so quietly, I don't I think anyone else hears. I figure I'll find out why he's apologizing here in a second. Like a conqueror, Mariah marches over to Marina and jabs a finger in her face. Time to pay up, dits! In two large steps, I move between the two of them. Okay, what the hell happened? Didn't you hear? I was about to, when you attacked my front door. Well, allow me to deliver the bad news then! This stole Marina's gold. What? Did not! Huh? Sis so stole Marina's gold. So Marina did take it then. It's impossible to figure anything out. Marina's crying too hard to talk and Mariah's just yelling nonsense like always. I turn to Joe, who's keeping a safe distance along with Tess. Can you please explain? Sure. Mayor ended up making Marina a bet for all the gold, which she lost. It was a pretty silly thing, and I told her just to let it go, but here we are. I'm equal parts amused and disgusted that Joseph uses the same nickname for Mariah that I do for Marina. Come to think of it, I'm not sure that I ever noticed how similar the names are. How could you not notice? A bet's a bet, and she lost fair and square! I don't think it was fair. The odds were kinda in your favor. I turn to Marina, the only person whose opinion really matters to me. Was it fair? Slowly, she nods. What game did you play? Poker. Oh god. I glare at Mariah, who at least has a shame to look away. Anyone who spent more than a minute around Marina would know that there's no way she could keep a straight face. I sigh and sit down on the bedside beside Marina. Wrap an arm around her. She leans into me, eyes moist. You know you can only take half the treasure, right? Marina and I split it equally, so she couldn't bet away my half. That wasn't the deal! That's the only deal she could have made. But... I'll bet you my half against hers. Amber, no! Oh, man. I squeeze her affectionately, but I shake my head. It's fine. I stand and go to where we've been stashing the gold. I pull out the box of nuggets and open it so Mariah can see. Her eyes light up and she licks her lips. I snap the box shut. Fine, but we're not playing poker! <laughs> Let's play strip poker, you don't have any clothes on anyway. Oh yeah? What game then? She thinks about it for a moment. Blackjack. Seriously? Blackjack is more about luck than it is skill. I'm not that great at poker, though, so blackjack might be the most fair game we could play. I wonder why Mariah suggested it, though. Maybe she expects me to win at poker? If that's the case, then the mind games have already begun. Fine. It's a bet. 
Marina stopped crying. Her breath still comes in little spurts, but she's mostly in control of herself. She tugs at my shirt. Remember, really? You don't have to do this. I screwed up. It's okay. I'll fix it. That's what I'm here for, right? I can't read the look on her face, the one that vanishes after a split second. Okay. Facing Mariah again, I put the gold away. Where will we play? There's not enough room here. There's a casino close by. Down the street from this one. We can do it there. I'm not old enough to gamble. Not legally, at least. She shrugs. Doesn't matter, this place won't check your ID. Probably gonna be closed within a year. I don't like the sound of that. I feel like I'm being set up. It's true. It's where we played. Really? Yeah, they had like party rooms that were empty. I just used one of those. I've never heard of anything like this place, but if they let Marina in, then they'll probably let me in too. I'd also feel better about playing with cards that I know Mariah won't have messed with. Fine. Tell me how to get there, and I'll meet you in a little bit. She gives me directions as well as the name of the building. Worst case, Marina can probably help me find it. Maybe. I count out Marina's half of the gold and put it into one of the boxes before handing it to Mariah, who snatches it from my grip. Enjoy, because this is the only time you'll get to touch the treasure. With the final sneer, Mariah leads her troop out of the RV. Joseph still looks pretty sorry about the whole thing. The door slams shut and we're left in silence. I look at Marina. She looks at the floor. I'm really sorry. I'm not even that upset. Compared to all the millions and on one million and one awful scenarios I concocted, this is pretty tame. And knowing Marina, it's not that shocking either. So I'm being honest when I smile at her. It's okay, really. I'll go win back your gold and then we can get out of Vegas. She sniffles. Seriously though, what were you thinking? I was just so surprised to see them here. I thought it must be fate or something. I was shopping around and I saw something that I really wanted, but I didn't have enough money. And then I saw the three of them at this little diner, so I went in to say hello and told them all about it. What was it you wanted to buy? That's a secret. I wanted to show it to you. But anyway, then Mariah made me that bed and... I don't know, Amber. I guess I just got so excited about it that I didn't really think. Like, if you'd been there, you would've beat her no problem. I don't even think she's very good at poker. It's just that... I'm kind of bad at hiding how I feel. Can't help but laugh. No way, you're kidding me. She sticks her tongue out at me. Guess she's feeling a little bit better. Really though, what if you lose to Mariah? Oh, ye of little faith. Then I lose. It won't happen though. Are you good at blackjack? Eh, uh, a lot of it's luck. There's stuff you can memorize, like card combos, but I don't know any of that. What if Mariah does? I doubt it. She would have played that against you if she did. Easier to make it seem like you just got unlucky, instead of her taking advantage of you. She didn't take- Bullshit, Mare. She might not have cheated, but she still should have known better. Marina frowns and looks at the floor again. I can't tell if I'm helping or not. Then I remember the candy I bought her earlier. It had totally slipped my mind over the last hour. Oh yeah! I got you something. To try to say sorry for being so weird lately. Even though I've already said that too. I grab the bag of chocolates from the fridge and the gummies from above it. Eyes wide, Marina holds them to her like babies. Amber... Where I start to water again. Thank you so much. I'm gonna make her so fat. Hey, no more crying. This wasn't supposed to make you cry. 
She giggles, but that doesn't stop two tears from running down her face. Sorry. <laughs> I'm crying a lot. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. Marina laughs again. She unties the gummy bag and digs around in it. The chocolates got a little melted on the walk back, but they've been in the fridge. They look just fine to me. She pulls out a few gummy soda bottles and offers me the bag. I don't want to take too much, but I do find one of the peach rings the cashier recommended. It really is good. Sweet, but in a mild way. It actually tastes like peaches. Are you ready to go? Marina spins the bag to twist it and ties off the top. Yeah. I vaguely know where the casino Mariah mentioned is located. We passed it early today, but I didn't pay much attention to it. As we load out of the RV, Marina's dragging her feet. Do you want to wait here? I can just go take care of this and then come back. No way! I don't want to split up again. After I lock up, I take her hand. Since I'm going to leave this time, the walk is in the slow. With the evening approaching, the temperature's gone down. At the same time, traffic is starting to build up. In a few hours, it'll look like an entirely different city here, once all the lights come on. The view of a big city at night, far in the distance, has always been one of my favorite sights. I can remember staying up late when Gramps and I were on the road so that I could press like a sticker against the window and look. They sell postcards in New York and Atlanta and other places all lit up, because it's so pretty. We've got a couple of hours until then. Neither Marina nor I say much while we walk. Even given the situation, it doesn't feel as awkward as most of our quiet times before. Soon, we reach the building Mariah described. That's the place? Yeah, this is it. We step inside. I can see why Mariah said this place might be closed down. Although it's pretty clean looking, there's hardly anyone here. A couple of people occupy slot machines, far away from each other. Aside from those two, and a bored looking host, the place is pretty empty. Well, those three in the trio. Mariah and her posse are seated on a semicircular couch, and an identical couch form a circle around the card table. No greetings are exchanged as Marina and I take our places across from them. A sealed deck of cards sits on the table. It's got gaudy Las Vegas landmarks and logos all over it, but at least it's legit. Should we ask that guy to come deal for us? Hell no! The only reason they don't check ID is because they don't care. If you attract any attention, they'll throw you out. Okay, so who will? Tess can. I was gonna say, Tess. Tess nods. Really? No offense, but does she even know how? Of course she knows how. She's not an idiot. And before you get any ideas, she's more likely to help you cheat than help me. Tess nods again. Just ask. Alright, that works for me. Because if two underage girls are going to play, then why not have a 10 year old deal the cards? <laughs> Makes sense. Mariah slits open the plastic wrap on the deck and hands it to Tess. The little girl takes out the instructional cards and juggers and then shuffles. I have to say, I'm impressed. She creates a bridge with the cards that's way tidier than I ever could. Mechanical, even. So there are 16 pieces total. We'll go piece by piece, I guess. Sure. That means that I'd have to win eight hands in a row, without Mariah or the dealer winning any, to earn back all of Marina's treasure. And I won't settle for anything less than the full amount. We have a small stack of tokens near us that each represent a single piece of treasure. How does this game work? Basically, you try to get the cards in your hand to add up to 21, or as close as possible without going over. Whoever's closest wins that round. The dealer can win, too. I didn't realize the dealer can win. We all get two cards. Then, you can stand, which is where you don't take any more cards, or you can hit, which is where you draw another. That sounds really easy. I guess. Like I said, it's mostly luck. Shut up. Time to play! I flip her off, but don't argue. We're not actually gonna- I don't think we're gonna play, right? Cause I, I'm stuck. <laughs> She's got 19, we have 18. Shit. 
Test deals with first hand. I stand while Mariah hits. I don't expect her to beat my E team. She lays down a 10, a 3, and a 6. Damn. Test slides are two tokens. 13. The next round I beat her. I win the next two rounds after that, but then the dealer wins and we had to start over. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and hit the sub for more walkthroughs, playthroughs, and let's plays on the gaming experience.